It must be top. Uh, just give it a few more minutes. Let me see if we can get um. Right now we got nineteen guys. Let me see if someone else gonna come in. If not, we're gonna go ahead. Can everyone see my screen? Correct. You need to unmute. You need to unmute your thing. We're having a presentation. We need to talk. So you gotta unmute your your, your speaker, or whatever it is. Yeah. I need everyone to be able to talk to me. Adam, you gotta unmute your, your, your mic. Huh? Okay. This guy, Talon, Talon, you gotta unmute your mic. Uh, Coach, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I need everyone to unmute the, the, the mic. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead with this thing here now. Pay attention very carefully, guys. So like you said on the schedule, we're talking about game model. Guys. Because I want you to unmute your mic, I don't want you to be making noise in the back. Guys, you can't be making noise in the back. We cannot be making noise in the back. Are we ready? Yes, coach. Yes, coach. Guys, still making noise in the back. I can't hear myself. The guys are making noise. Can you stop making noise, guys? The guys are making noise in the back. We need to stop making noise. Guys, show some respect. Stop checking your phone and your stuff, all right? Which one of these guys checking stuff? You need to stop. All right, guys, so like we said here. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, when, once you're ready, let me know, all right? Once you can stop making noise, let me know. Once you stop making noise, let me know. All right, guys, so pay attention here, guys. You see uh, something here called AFC Game Model and, and Club DNA. When we're talking about game model and we're talking about DNA, game model simply means our game, the way we play the game and our style of playing the game, right? So our way, our identity, the way we play the game, how we want the game to be played and how we play the game. That's our game model. That comes to our style of play, our formation we use, our ta the tactical um, uh, information we give you guys, some of the uh, stuff we ask the player to do or the team to do. So that's the game model, right? And the DNA would be our identity. Right, our ID. That's our DNA. So we will start from here when, it, when we come to the style of play. Uh, the guys that keep making noise, it's not fair, guys. That shows very, very rude. Is it me teaching, me talking, or me trying to talk to you guys and I'm playing loud music in the back? That's what you guys be living. That's totally rude. 
Uh, guys, these guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute everyone because I, I can't do it with Guru, guys. Just can't deal with it. This, what, we had a little kid on before you guys. It was very decent. Nobody was making noise. Nobody was playing with the phone. No one was doing all that stuff. I don't know why you guys keep making noise in the back. You need to show some respect. All right, so before we go to the rest of the thing, I want to show you this um, slide right here that said AFC style of play, AFC eight style of play, right? So the eight style of play, you see Matt, you, they got, we got Matt in here, we got um, built up play, we got sustained threat, we got fast tempo, we got direct play, we got counter attack, we got crossing, we got hard press, all right? That's the style of play there. That's all eight of them. And then we will break it down into pieces. So when you see the first one here, this is the maintenance style of play. That, the word maintenance just means for you, well, for us to maintain, for us to maintain stuff, how we keep our stuff together. So when we play in the, sh the shader area here, which is the gray area, is our own half. The pitch is divided into two halves with the center line over here. So this is our half, this is the opposition half. So with the greater area here, this shader area, is called maintenance. So we're trying to maintain the ball within our own half by keeping possession, passing the ball. In order for us to do that, we need communication. We need guys to be good at passing the ball. We need guys to be good at good first touches, the, the weight of the pass, the movement, and all that kind of stuff in order for us to keep possession here. But the reason we keep in possession here is to try to force these opposition players to come into our half so that we can look to exploit the space they left behind them or the space they create behind them so we can look to exploit that space. That's the reason why we, we call this sustained threat. We, we want to play that style of play. This style of play is only successful if we have every order of players all of our players can, can pass the ball effectively. They can move. They can communicate. You know, they got good control of the ball. That's the only way we can be successful playing that style because this is going to do with possession. It's a possession base. Because once you turn the ball over in your own half, you lost possession. The team can score. So the reason to do that is to build a play in our own half and invite them to come, and then we take the space behind them, right? So that's what they call maintenance. These are the area we can direct. So you see the red arrow? That's how we can attack them, right? Once they come in there, we can attack them from the back. The next one you see is called fast tempo. So fast tempo, fast tempo, and in, uh, the pitch is divided into two half again. We take away their half. So this is the center line here, and we take away the half. So this is their half, but we want to go into their half and pressure them in their own half. In the half here, we're not defending. We're attacking them. So instead of us passing the ball here, now once we get the ball, we attack with speed. So if you were dribbling, we want you to dribble with speed forward. If you were passing, we want you to pass with speed forward. If you were running, we want you to run with the ball with speed forward, right? So we fast tempo. That's what we're doing, but in the own half, not in our own half. So those two stars I just gave you, I'll give a definition. So maintenance catch up the possession in which a team looks to maintain and secure possession of the ball within the defensive area of the pitch. So the defensive area of the pitch, that's why you look to keep possession in your own half. And then fast tempo is the fast, the, the fast possession in the opposition half where the player released the ball to a teammate in less than two seconds. In order to play that system, I can have a ball hawk. 
I need guys to be able to release the ball quicker. All right? So two seconds. The player, the player must dribble at high speed, sequence of uh, consecutive individual fast possession. An uh, individual fast possession must occur in the opposition half and can be achieved when the player releases the ball to a teammate in less than two seconds or when the player dribble at a fast tempo. All right? So that's the two. Now you got a next, the third one here called build up play. So build up, build up mean we divide the field into three thirds. So here is our own half. Here is the middle third. And here is the final third, the opposition half. We want to come in this area from the center line to the 18 yard box line. We want to come in here and keep possession in this place. Right? We want to keep the ball here. The reason we're doing that, when they come and botch into us, then they create space in the back and easily attack them. Right? So we want to come halfway to them and choke them right here. So once they, once they lose the ball to us or once they give out any kind of space or they rush us, we can just play right behind them and get right into that six yard, the 18 yard box, into the six yard box, we score. All right? So the next one called sustained threat. This is very important and very effective. Because you play 11 v 11, there's no more retrieve line. So because there's no retrieve line, you want to sit right here and wait for them. So you move up the team and you sit in the final third. Now we go from right outside the 18 yard box now to the goal line. And we, th we, 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 pre we stick them right there. We want to be right in that area when we lost the ball, when we have the ball, this is where we want to play. This is where Liverpool plays. That's why Liverpool, when they win the ball, they go straight to goal. Because they moved all the players up and they got more, more players in this area. Juventus uses this as well. So they're in this area here. And so that once they, came, re, they gain possession of the ball again, they go right to goal and they look to score. All right? It's called sustained threat. Right? So again, those two start of play that I just showed you, it says sustained threat. It's a threat playing style. Again, similar to maintenance style and build up play. However, the focus is lie on possession in the attacking third. So again, it's about possessing the ball in the, attack, in the attacking third of the pitch. The time spent in possession must be more than six seconds. So the time we spent in possession of the ball should be, shouldn't be more than six seconds. Right. So six, so six seconds, we should, that's the longest we can be in possession in that area, and then we look to attack the goal, right? A possession in which a team is in the attacking third of the pitch, which linearly increased to 10 passes, right? 100% of the time. What the heck is going on here? All right. So build up plays the same thing. Build up play, building up possession in which a team is looking for opportunity to attack. We build up play because we're looking for opportunity to attack the opposition, right? So you got them over there. These are the description of the different style of play. Uh, direct, direct play would be we get in the ball and we want to make the ball long. So we got a big striker that can run that fast. We want to play the ball up to him. So we'll receive the ball from the back. Boom, we throw it to him and he go. Direct passes, no offensive dribbling. We get the ball, bang, we send the ball to our best player. He go and go try to score goals. Counter attack, he can get the ball from a corner kick. Boom, he send it up, he run with the ball up the field and he, he let it go off his hand. You cannot catch the ball from a corner kick and just holding your hand and start looking around like this. No. Once in counter attack, you receive the ball, you start running forward right away. You start running out of the 18 yard box line. And then once you're out of the 18 yard box line, boom, you let go. Because that ball is going to be in your hand on the ground now you start running away. Because once you're in the 18 yard box, before you leave that 18 yard box down, you should drop the ball on the ground. But once you drop that ball on the ground, it has to leave your feet forward to the player out there. That's counter attack. And then with the crosses and hard press, you know that one already. All right. So we go to game, uh, the fundamental of game model. So game model, like I said to you, game model is the understanding of the game. Understanding, attacking, and defending. That's game model because these are the moments in the game. They got two moments in the game, attacking moment or def uh, defensive moment. So when we understand the game, we say attacking. Player move creatively, continuously, sp continually space and using it and searching for advantage. So again, you're moving creatively, you're continuously creating space and using 
it to search for advantage, right? When you're defending, you know, you, 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 you may mark in, try to prevent goals, closing our space, denying the opposition for moving the ball forward, right? So if you understand that, that's the model of the game. That's how the game being played, right? So we either have the ball or we don't have it. And when we have it, what do we do? When we don't have it, what do we do, all right? So again, you cannot do that by yourself. You do it as a team. It's a player depend on their position on the ground. So you depend on your position on the ground that have certain tasks or tactical mission. You will be given certain instruction as a player as to what to do. And, and you must do those things in order to be successful in this game model, all right? So again, we come over here. In this session here, you see the pitch is divided into sessions. Go one, two, three, divide into four, four quarter here. And then vertically, Four quarter horizontally is three three quarter and three and three and three um, three pitches. So here is a defensive half. In this play, we call it first phase. They say phase one. That's where we receive the ball. Phase two. That's when the ball leaves phase one. It comes to phase two. From phase two to phase three. From phase three to phase four. Phase four is the final phase where we're looking to score goals. In this area here, when you saw that sustained threat. And when you saw the build up play, this is where we keep possession, this area. So this is this, the build up play area. This is, this is this area called sustained threat. So this is what we're looking for. This is the area we can dribble. We can look to score goals. We can create space to score goals. The area is where we keep possession, circulation. We keep the ball in the area, keep possession for these guys to get free so we can look to give them the ball to look to score. Over here is a defensive midfield area. When the ball gets in the area, we look to pass the ball to these guys through ball. Looking to pass the ball, penetrating pass to this area, to the third phase, so it goes right into that fourth phase. Into this first phase, the first phase is where the play began. So we get the ball from the keeper, we pass it straight out, and we all move up to support the play. All right? In this phase, in this area here, it's very important for us here in this area, because now the game model here, you look at the structure organization of the game model. So the structure organization, the game model, we're looking at set pieces, right? Decision make, decision rules, behavior relating to play and organization, ideas and behavior at different moments of the play. All AFC youth and Southampton player teams are encouraged to, to, to display an offensive style of play based on keeping possession and quickly and quickly moving the ball, right? That's how we want to play. We want you guys to be able to keep possession of the ball, but also move the ball a little bit quicker. Sometimes that identifies a specific way of playing from all AFC Southampton players, right? So again, over here, we say system of play, position, numbers, and player profile. This is very important for you individual players. So you must listen to this portion. Over here, we said, when we start, when we start to think about the general playing characteristics associated with each numbers, we start to see how all of this makes sense from coaching tactical perspective, from a scouting and recruiting perspective, and from a player education perspective. Coaching coaches with their new education are now evaluating the tactical adjustment necessary for the system of play based on the quality of their players. While recruiting for college or national team, coaches and scout can set out to identify and organize the maze of players more easily. So you see goalkeeper here. The characteristics of a goalkeeper, they have to be technically proficient. That means they got to be technically good. That's why we say, Ethan, always be good with your feet. Dribble here, do this. You got to be good with your feet. You got to have solid technical passing ability. You got to be able to pass the ball good. You got to have good passing in your feet because your team is dependent on you to be able to move that ball. You got to get strong distribution. You got to make good decisions. You got to be a gifted athlete. Right, that's the characteristic. So if I was looking for a goalkeeper for my university, I'm looking at those things and I come and watch you play and this is what I'm looking for. And you must have those things in order for me to consider you as a prospect to go to my college. Outside backs, outside back mean left back and right back. Number two and number three. Your ability to play, create long service, strong at defending 1v1, speed, you gotta be speedy, player be able to cover ground on the flanks, 
solid technical passing ability, okay? When we make cover ground is fling, that means you're gonna be run up and down, up and down the wings. You gotta be able to do that. You gotta be able to get good, strong passes, right? You gotta have good distribution uh, and ability to be able to do that, to play defense, right defense and left defense. Central defense, left and right back. So number four and number five. Central defense is two type of player where you play left and you play right, right center defense and all right center defense. In, in football, we call it number four and the number five. You, you, should, you, should be a cons, you should be a constant player who are organizer. You should be a leader who can organize. You should be strong. You should be tall, right? You should have the ability to cover ground. So you should be able to move, right? Especially making vertical runs. So making a sideway run, you know, vertically, making run vertically, you should be able to do that with no problem. Technically, you should be strong defensively. You should be able to make strong tackle in the air on the ground as a center back. As a center defensive midfield, which is number six, we want you to be able to, be able to work very hard at a very hard working and rate tempo, right? Ability, you should be able to keep the ball. Your vision, your vision and your technical passing ability should be greater than anybody else on the pitch, right? You should be strong in the air on the ground. You should be a good tackler. Number eight, that's a central midfield player. So number eight, this person should have, their work rate should be on, not measurable. You cannot measure the person's work rate. They should have speed, they should have endurance, they should be a good leader on the field, they should be a good organizer, they should be a good playmaker, they should be creative, they should be good in the air, they should have long range of finishing ability, they should be able to finish on goal as well, they should be able to provide defensive pressure on the opposing team, they should be able to do all that as a number eight. Then my number seven and my number 11, the guys that play on the wings up front. On the wings, they should be very, they should be fit. First of all, you should be fit. You can't be, have a lazy guy that is not fit that wants to play number seven and number 11. You should be fit. Nico, you should be fit to be able to play number 11 or number seven. Your work rate should be very, very high. Your ability to make long runs and recover, and recover strongly, 1v1 attack and 1v1 defending should be very, very high. Your ability to serve the ball down the flanks, which is down the wings, long range shooting ability, you should have all that in order to play that position. All right. Now we go to our number 10. Number 10 is a central attacking midfield. You got to have good finishing ability. You got to be clinical in front of the goal. In the final third, you should be able to create and score goals, create opportunity and score goals, strong 1v1 skills and finishing. You should make the play very difficult for the opposition defender. You should make the play, don't make it easy for them. Make them to think, make them to be confused to mark you. Give them, don't give them enough cue, uh, clue as to what you're about to do with the ball. Let them always be thinking what you're about to do with the ball, right? Number nine. Your number nine is your goal scorer, your finisher. So your ability to play back turn to goal. So your back always going to be turned to goal when you're number nine. They got to turn towards your team to receive the ball. So you got to be very creative. You got to be a technical finisher. You got to be having a strong, you got to be strong, you got to be tough to play number nine. So number nine is not an easy position where we pull easy guys to go and fool around over there, right? And then we come, that's, that's number nine. So now if you come over here, we're going to have, that's not you guys, that's for the young kids. We move on all the way over here. All right. So this 9v9, that's not you either. That's it. All right. So you over here. So again, we got two formation that you're gonna be playing in, right? As long as you play with us in from U13 to U18, that's the position, that's the two formation you will be playing. You're gonna be playing one, four, three, three. That means four defender, three center mid and three midfielder, three wing, and three attacker. Right? The next one would be this is a new one. This is what Southampton used last year from from the day. Southampton been using this for the past 10 years, this formation. This year, the, this year we end, they change it to this formation. They still use that, but this is the new formation. Three defender, five midfielder, and two attacker. So when you, as you see here, when you're playing with back three, you got three center backs. They play very narrow. So left center back, center back, right center back. You got two defensive midfield. You got one attacking midfield, and you got... Left and right midfield. The left and right midfield, when we're defending, they become left and right back. And then you have your two attackers. Left, left striker, right striker, right in there. Right, when you play in a 3-5-2 position. 
But in order to play, so these are the position when you play in a 4-3-3 position. So in here, we got one goalkeeper. We got back four. We got, we got number two, number three, number four, number four, and number five. Right? So when you play, when, it, when I say play number four, that means you're playing right center back. When you play number five, you become the last person. You play left center back. If you play number three, you play left back, left wing back. If you play number two, you play right wing back. If you play number six, you're defensive midfielder. So guys at Thailand, they say where we want to play the defensive midfielder, right? Because they can defend, but they are also they can, they can make good tackle and, uh, you know, and we can want to play them in this kind of position. Number eight, you center midfielder. Number 10, attacking center midfield. And then you got number, you got your right winger, which is number seven, Nico, then do that. You know, left, left wing again, Nico, then over here. Then you get center, uh, center forward and you get a guy who score our goals, we put him over here. Our team doesn't have this person, center forward. We're still looking for a person to play here. So we, we, a lot of times we just put miss guys over, we just put guys over here, but we don't have a good finisher to play at this position yet, all right? So now you move on and say, in this formation here, in the 3-5-2 formation, how, what, what is the requirement in that formation? You say chemistry. Chemistry is a big thing. So how do we gel? How do we connect with each other, right? A relationship will be among each other. That's our chemistry. So the chemistry, the, the midfield can get congested. So now we don't want the middle of the field to get really congested. Because if we crowd the middle up, then there's no way for the midfield to move up and down to pass the ball and give stuff like that, right? We need tactical awareness from all our players. All our players need to have know their roles and responsibility in and out of the field, right? We need clear communication from the team. Attacking and defending team, we need to have clear communication. You know, supremely, we are, our, our defenders, the left and right back, are to be fit. I, I'm, I'm not saying lazy. I'm saying they got to be physically fit. They gotta be confident on the ball. They gotta be very disciplined and can put a decent cross. They can cross a decent ball in when we need them to, right? Our defensive back three, which is a three center back in yellow, they, 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 they should put a decent crosses to us. They, back three, they should, work, they should work together very, very well. They should work together, know when to attack, the ball. They should all know when to attack the ball. They can't be running underneath the ball when the ball coming in. They run, they miss the ball. We don't want that. They got to know the timing. They got to be very smart. They got to work together as a unit. When to drop off. They should know when to drop off the, the number nine, right? They should know when to provide coverage, when to provide and when to, to their teammates, right? Then we come to midfield. Our midfielder, who, they, they should be confident on the ball as, as the aim is to shuffle. The job is to shuffle. So we're playing a card, and their job is to distribute the card. To shuffle the opposition game plan, you should dominate possession. Our midfielders should dominate possession. So again, these are the engine of our team, our midfielders. They should be disciplined, the holding midfielder who support the defense. So this is our number six. Our holding midfielder who support our defense, cover the, the wing backs. You should cover the wing back, right? You should, be, you should have energy. Mobility, the striker who have a good understanding of honesty and can stretch the pitch. Play open space for the midfielder, right? So these are the requirements when we play in that position, right? Look at the strength. This is a position we play in, and these are the strength of the position. Why is this position good for us to play? The reason why it's good to play, it gave us five different, it gave us control of the ball, right? Control of the ball. With five across in the midfield, with, with five players in the midfield, it makes us, it make us a dominant possession. We will limit the, up, will limit the opposition goal scoring potential and we increase our own potential. That's how we have, that's the advantage. We got five players in the middle of the park. We limit the scoring opportunity, but we increase ours. We stop the opposition from building up play from the back. We will stop them from building up play from the back because we got five guys in the middle that we can go forward at any time. The range of attacking options, we're going to stop them again. The range of attacking options, we're going to have a wave of players can move towards the opposition. We, can have, we got five players plus the two front guys, so we have seven players that can move front, from the middle to the front, from the middle to the front, so we have lots of attacking options. Passing triangle, 
and passing angle. We're going to have triangle at all time to be able to pass the ball in a dimension triangle and angles to pass the ball. We can force the opposition to make mistakes. We can always force the opposition to make mistakes at all time. Defensively, we're going to be very, we're going to have a solidified defense. We had three guys at the back to protect the box. The three guys, they're protecting the 18 yard box. So when you see the three guys right here in the back, you see the job, the goal, you see that, you see that box? They're not protecting the space over here. Over, they're protecting the box area. So those three guys protecting the box area. All right. So sim simple to vary, to vary the game plan. The coach can easily go more attacking or defensive simply by instructing his midfield and wing back to either drop deep or advance further up the pitch. All right. We, we need to provide, we're, we're with and depth our wing back. You see our wing back now, midfielder here. When we want with, we want them to go wider. We want them to go wider, create space for the midfielder so they can leave the middle or wide open. So the three guys are in the green can get in that middle and then use that space in the middle. And then these two blue guys can drop off and go wide to create that space. Then we have two guys up front. No two guys up front, they can sacrifice as a striker for control of the midfield. So we can either drop them back in the midfield to increase more guys in the middle, or we can keep them up front to give a more scoring opportunity here. They increase our chances of attacking options because we got two guys up front. All right? So do anybody have questions so far about this one? All right. If you have anything, you have questions, just unmute your mark. Or mute your, your, your microphone and, then, and talk, and, and then we can talk. All right. So again, this is the weakness. So when we play in the formation, we have our weakness too. We need the, the, the right players. So we need good. We need left and right back. We need we need a good guys. I don't need a foolish guy that fooling around over there. I need solid player that can play that position. Right. We need the right wing backs. If we don't have it. That's a, that's, a weak, that's a weakness for us. The, def the defense relies on speedy, wide center backs. So again, the, those three defense in the back, they need to, be, they need to have speed because they're going to rely on the speed to keep up with the opposition. The opposition can attack the space behind the wing back. So again, the opposition can attack this space at all times. They can attack this space at all times. So we need to have these guys to be able to run back. That's, if we don't have it, that's our win back. Okay, discipline, holding midfield is crucial. If our holding midfield, if Talon is not disciplined to do his job, Parker is not disciplined to do their job, we stand no chance. We want them to be disciplined at all times. Because if they're not, then they compromise the system. Then that's our weakness. That can be our weakness too as well. The team must communicate well we have to communicate at all time. All of us, the entire team, need to talk. If we don't talk, the system is going to fall apart. It's going to be our weakness too as well. Our center back becomes redundant if the opposition play one up front. If, we, if the opposition is playing with one player up front, our three center back, they become bold. They just sit there and nothing happening for them. So it can also be a weak part for us too as well because we have three guys just sitting in the back with no challenge for them. Right? That could be a weakness. Must constantly be moving. We cannot sit and hold our knees or put our hand on our head. We got to be constantly moving to create space and opportunity. If we don't, that's going to be a weakness for us. The possibility, we're going to have the possibility to be overrun. We have to hold our position so that these guys do not overrun us. When you play in this position, in the formation, you gotta you gotta mark the space. Don't mark the men. You close down the space. You mark the space, not the men. Because if you can do that, we're gonna they gonna the, the possibility of an overrun is gonna be very very huge, right? So we need to close that down. All right. So the formation here again. In this formation here, our goalkeeper is become our center one of our center backs, right? In order for the dominate possession, our goalkeeper should have good feet. He should be able to pass the ball, pass the ball here and there. When we pass the ball back to him, he will be able to pass it back to us. In front of the goal, our center back, who are the main defender of the team, it is their job to put their bodies. Again, they need to put a body in front of the ball, slide tackle, throw the set in front of the ball, you know, diving head or be awkward. They need to be very ruthless. 
very ruthless and throw the body in front of the ball at all times, right? Because we depend on them to sacrifice themselves for the, for the play. Our defenders also. Then the need to push forward, when our midfielder need to push forward. They need to have flexibility. Tactical, they need to have tactical flexibility. They need to be able to, they need to, be able to communicate in the middle, be switching, be able to switch around, right? They need to be flexible in the approach to the game. Our striker, the main goal scoring, they need to score goals. They need to move to create space. They need to open the space. They need to open up. They need to push the midfield into space, right? They should have good understanding of the, of the roles, what they're doing up front. They should keep in mind that we want to dominate possession. So they should get, help us to do that by giving, closing down, by opening up space, be good with the ball, hold the ball up to get help from the midfield to keep possession and all that kind of stuff, right? So these, that, that's how we set it up. So roles and responsibility. This is very important for you guys too as well. When you're playing goalkeeper, your responsibility here is whenever a team plays three at the back, the goalkeeper has more passing responsibility than other formations. The 3-4-3 three, three usually indicate that the team prefer to dominate possession rather than sit back and defend. This means the goalkeeper must have... Hold on one second. Uh, this means the goalkeeper. Uh, well, well, yeah, yeah. This mean the. Uh, this mean the goalkeeper must have good ball skills to help the team retain possession. As a team is likely to control possession, the keeper must. Let me see right here. The keeper must. The. Uh, the keeper must retain, retain that con that concentration for the time when the opposition break through the threat, the goal. When called into action, they must respond confidently and deal with any cross into the box or stop any shot on target. They must command and dominate their box. Unable to catch the ball, they should punch the ball away or parry it to the either side of the goal and away from danger. To minimize shot on goals, they must communicate well with the defense in front of them and help organize and direct the player to close down the any danger with all the players happening in front of them they can clearly see where the opposition are threatened and constantly communicating this to the defender organization shot stopping and good feet are the key attributes of the modern goalkeepers all right so in this formation here that's that's a responsibility there for our goalkeeper and then Response rules and responsibility for our defenders. Now we're looking at if our our back our our our, our three defenders. It is three defense center back who are primarily responsible for protecting the goalkeeper and defending the goals. They must do everything possible to prevent the opposition from scoring. While tackling and making play, play players is a big part of their game, closing down space and communicating clearly with each other. The goalkeeper and holding midfield is just as important. Together, they must form an importable unit. When the opposition to make it through, the, the midfield and center back must engage the player with the ball while in the midfield. Right? So again, these things are gonna be on, on the app there. You can go and read these things, but like we say, when you play in that position as a back three, your job is very, very important, right? Your roles and responsibility, like okay, win back. Our wing defender, this is a crucial position in formation. And without the right personnel, if we don't have the right person, it's unlikely to succeed. The strength of the 3 5 2 formation, possession, attacking option, and defensive stability all driving from the wing backs. So if, when we play in this position, I want to have Mateo and Liam there on the, my wing back. Because it rely on people with speed, people with energy to play that position in order for us to be successful in the formation. We must have speedy player, strong player, technical player playing wing backs. All right. So next one would be Mayfielder. Again, Mayfielder, as mentioned earlier, it is, it is, it is in the central midfield of the 3 5 3 formation that the coach can rely, really step their identity. So, in order, our identity, like we said, our DNA, our identity is in the middle of the field. Those three guys in the green that we show, this is our identity because they control that game. 
the movement of the game, the success of our attack, of our offense, rely on those three guys in the middle of the field to distribute the ball, to create play, to move, you know, to you know, to stop the penetration, to do, to feed it, to supply the attack, the attackers. These are the guys that we're relying on to be able to do that. Right. So again, the midfielder here, regardless of the type of player selected, all of the central midfielder must be comfortable on the ball. You hear what they say? No matter who player I say playing center, center midfield, all of them should be comfortable on the ball. I don't want guys going to the middle of the field to be guessing. You should be very, very comfortable on the ball when you play in the middle of the field, right? Striker. Our striker here, they are judged. You are judged by the number of goals you score. So if you play a striker for a whole season and you score three goals, then you might not have a striker. We will judge you based upon how many goals you're scoring. So it's very, very important as a striker for you to be strong to score goals. Right? So again, striker, you must be able to drag the opposition defender out of position. You got to be able to take the defender away to create space, take them away, open the pitch up. All right? So again, when we attacking in this formation, this is how we look when we attacking. See that? These are my back three. The guys, see when we attacking here, this is how we look when we attacking. This is my right center back. My center back here, my left center back. My, my, my defensive midfield here, right? So we are talking now. You see the, us here in blue, we are talking. Or we the guy in red, and we are talking towards the goal. But these, this is how we attack, right? And then when we are talking here, very easy. The great thing about the 3 5 2 formation is, is that by defending from the front, you actually gain an offensive advantage. So if we defend from the front, we have an advantage to attack the opposition team and score goals. If we pressure them from the front, we can win the ball back and attack them right away. Right? We have limited passing option. They're gonna, the center player is going to have limited passing option to, in our midfield goal. We've got five guys in the middle. So we cut back on the passing op option. The movement to advance, we, we cut that off as well. Right? But attempting to get in behind the, the striker, allow the attacking midfield to explore the space. So if my attacker trying to go behind the defender, and take them away, then it gave my attacking midfield, which my number 10, the space to drive through, to drive in, to go and attack on goal, right? So if we are attacking, this is, if we look, this is when we defend it. You see how we, we all stay tight here when we're defending in the formation? This is us in blue here. We're in blue. Look at us here in blue. We mark, we're not marking the man, we're marking the space. So you see here, this is, my, my, this is the guy here, center back. He's marking the space. The red play, if the ball goes to the red player, he just slides there. If the ball goes to the next red player, he just slides there. If the ball goes to the player, the guy just slides there. If the ball goes, he just slides there. So the black arrow is where they're going to move. So in this formation, we mark the space. We, should, we close down the space. We don't mark the man. Right? So defending, as mentioned earlier in this article, the striker play a key role in defensive work of this team. So when we play in this formation, these two guys up here, they play a very, very key role in defending, right? You see, they're, they're pressing, they're pressing, they, when they're pressing, we want, energetic, we want people with energy to display help, stop the opposition from building play from the back and gaining a foothold on the ball. We don't want them to gain control of the ball. So we want to be able to press them from the front, right? The striker might be buzzing around up in front. So buzzing me, you might be going, you might be moving, moving around, yeah, like roving around, we're moving around, front and back, from side to side, right? To make sure you keep the opposition defender busy, right? And by doing that, you create space our win, for our wing backs to run on the side too, or our attacking midfield to, to attack the ball, right? So over here, same thing we say again when you're defending. If the opposition do manage to get in behind our wing backs, our center back should defend the midfield. You defend the midfield, need to immediately come out wide. So if they play that ball behind our wing backs, we want our three center back, one of them to step in right away to close down that danger. Right. So these are the variations we have. This is a tactical variation. So these are the tactical variation. So these are we, we can change it around anytime we want. So we start in here. These are the tactical variation. You see where the players location? This guy is our wing back. Look at where they're sitting very, very high. Right. So these are tactical variations. Uh, while the three at the back remain constant in terms of what is expected of them, it is the midfield and up front that provide the most variable of the team lineup. 
So again, we got our three guys in the back. We depend on them. They're solid in the back. But we're looking at a guy in the midfield to create that movement, that separation we're looking for so we can be successful. Right? So these are all the tactical variation in here. These are different, different tactical variation. The two holding player, we got two holding player midfielder in the central area to protect the center back by covering wings and, and either side of the field and all that kind of stuff, right? So we have our midfield player that's in the middle, wanting to help the defend, wanting to help the wing backs, to cover all those spaces. These are all the different variation, like that image I showed you. So like all these things, just explanation of all the different, different variation. So now that's the conclusion of that three five three five two. Now we go back to this four three the four three three. We got three defenders in the four defenders in the back, and then we got three in the middle and three up front. Here we got number again. We go from number, and then we said number one is our goalkeeper. Our four and our five is our center back. Our two and three is our def wing defenders. Our six and our eight is our midfielder here, and then we got. Eight and 10 is our two central midfield, attacking midfield. And then we have our 11 and nine and seven as our attacking three, right? And in here, it asks you on the side here, what kind of player we're looking for to play this position? We're looking for guys with tactical information, technically good on the ball, physically strong, and have mental strength, right? These are the characteristics we're looking for. These are the kind of player we're looking for, the pro profile of the player. So what kind of player we want to play on our team? guys that have these equalities. That's what we're looking for. Goalkeeper, again, we want our goalkeeper to, to have good control to collect the ball, handling the ball, serving the ball with hand, feet, receiving uh, passes and angle, distance, tackle, rigging, possession, 1v1, command, direct the team, and all that kind of stuff. That's what we're looking for our goalkeeper to have, all the characteristics. Our goalkeeper should be uh, should be, you have power to accelerate and explosive movement, right? Mobility to maximize height and reach, maximize speed of reaction, alert and focus, constant assessment of the player, lead confident, divisive mentally, resilient, refocus target and objective. We want our goalkeeper to be to have that. Now we're looking at our number two and our number three. We want them to collect the ball effectively. They should collect, receive the ball from the goalkeeper. Right, and they should be able to run forward with the ball, full passing range, crossing from the flank, running through the channel, tackle, intercept, regain possession of the ball. We need them to have all that characteristics. They should recognize when to execute, penetrate on the flank. They should organize and direct the number seven and number eleven in defending roles. They should they should central they should have central channel balance, cover the number four and the number five in the other position. They should have speed and endurance. They should re have repeatedly, they should run explosive runs, they should accelerate, they should change speed, response to ball, endurance, box to box, range of full match, right? They should be a confident competitor in one on one set isolation. They should be confident in attacking, defending roles, alert, immediate response in transition. They should have that, right? So when you look in here, this is our two center backs. We want our center back to do a marking. They should be tactic. They should, they should, they should trace. They should intercept. They should tackle. They should help the ball. You know, one on one passing. They should, you know, be able to get penetrating passes. They should decide to execute man marking the opponent's space, build out, you know, possession, tempo in central channel. They should do all that stuff there, right? Our center backs, these guys over here. Then you go to our center, our two central midfield. Again, same as the center backs. They should have all the same quality here. Primary option is to build a play out of possessions, defend central, uh, control centrally in front of the backs, penetrate movement, pass or run with the ball. Those kind of stuff they should have, right? And then you look at our our attacking midfield, our number ten. This is our Messi here. Our Messi should be able to do the same thing. You should collect and turn. On a pressure, you should be able to pass the ball, penetrate goal, score, uh, you know, goal scoring chances. If you dribble, you should strike the ball on goals. You should be, you should be able to have speed, you should be able to create separation. You should do all that, you know, three, 360 degree awareness of what's going on around them. You should have ambition of attacking. You should have good mentality of attacking on the ball, right? So that's our Messi there. You should be able to do that. Then our wingers, our seven and 11. Same thing, they should be good down the wings. They should be able to transition, 
from a, a winger to a defender. They should be able to go back and forth transition with speed. They should have good endurance, good speed. They should be able to cross the ball. They should be able to change speed, change direction, right? They should be flexible. They should have good skills, right? So stuff like that. And then you come to our number nine. You should be good at scoring goal, one-on-one -on -one defending. You should be good at taking them on one-on-one. -on -one. You should have good timing. You should order score, finish all the chances he gets. You have endurance, strong, you know. You know, you should, you should have the flexibility. You should be able to make repetitive movement on, off the ball and stuff like that, right? So that's it for this style of play. This is the game model again when you see here. This is how the play goes on. When you play in a 3-4-3 in a, a three, three formation, this is based off the game model, the line of goalkeeper. So this is the goalkeeper line. This is the center back line. This is the two and three line. You see the two and three, they're always in front of the four and five. Then you see the six is right in front of them. And then the seven and eight, the, yeah, the, 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 the eight and 10 the, is right here. And then the, the seven and nine, the 11, they are they front now. Right, so that's the game model there. So now we come over here. So we got faces. So this is the defensive sector. That means the defensive area. So the guys that are in here, they're defenders. When they receive the ball from the keeper, they look to pass the ball to these guys. And when these guys get the ball, they look to pass it to these guys. And when these guys have the ball, they want to keep possession in the area to, for these guys to create room for them to go forward, to create separation. And once they get the ball in here, these guys should be able to score goals. This is the dribble. You can dribble in here. You can dribble in here to allow you to create space and separation so you can score goals. The rest of this area is just all passing area. It's not dribbling area. This is where you dribble in the final third. Again, it's a corridor again. You see the corridor here. In this corridor here, you got maybe Damien playing a right defense here. You got, I don't know, maybe, um, Brandon playing center back. You got Ali playing left back. Ali can come to Damien. Ali can come to uh, Brandon, but he cannot come to Damien. Damien can go to Brandon, but, but Damien cannot come to Ali. Right? But then Brandon can go to Ali, can go to Damien. But then Damien can go back and forth like that. Ali can go back and forth. The only difference here is that Brandon uh, Ali, and Damien cannot go to Ali over here on the left. And Ali cannot come to Damien on the right. But Ali can come to Brandon in the middle. And then these guys can go in the middle as well. So we play in the corridor. Same thing with the midfielder, right? If you if Talon was playing here, Talon can go both sides. Both sides. This guy over here, maybe if Joe was playing here or Parker was playing here, they cannot come in here. They can come and stop here. In between, from this line to here, they can play there and up front and back. But they cannot come on this side. Right? They have to stay within the zone, all right? So again... In the game model, we got two things that happen again. Offensive organization and defensive organization. When we have the ball, we want offensive organization. We got to create space. We got to get wider. We got to get bigger to, uh, and then make this field big to receive the ball. That's our organization when we're in possession of the ball. When we're not in possession, we want to make the field smaller. We want to mark the space. We want to you know, mark the player. We want to take away all the bigger space. We want to get narrow and string the field. We want to protect our goal side and everything like that, right? That's our organization when we don't have to. Offensive transition. That means when we, when we were here, you were attacker. Now we lost the ball. Now you become a defender. So you're transitioning now to a defend. Here you were the defender. Once we have the ball, now you want to transition to attacker. So now you transition from a defender now to attacker. So that's what they call defensive transition and offensive transition. So offense going to defense. Defense going to offense. That's the transition. And then set, set plays. Set plays mean like having a, 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 a free kick from the side of the field, having a free kick from the middle of the field, penalty shot, throw in, corner kicks, and all that kind of stuff. That's set plays. So, again, offensive organization. It is a characteristic by behavior of the team at the time of possession of the ball with the aim to prepare and create finishing situation to score a goal. Right. So again, when we're doing offensive organization, this is what we're looking to do. Right. But at the game model, defensive transition, it is a characteristic and behavior that should be taken during the second after the loss of the ball. So when we lost the ball, our attitude needs to change right away from offense to defense. It has to change. It's no mistake. 
it has to be mandatory with, with this with this organization we disorganize so we want to get right back into our function again get back in our shape we start defending again because we just lost the ball right so again again defensive organization same thing i say again we're stopping the, the opposing team from getting comfortable on the ball we're stopping them from creating to putting passes together to try to create goals to opportunity we want to avoid all that so we want to organize ourselves again defensively to be able to stop all that stuff from coming through right offensive again offensive organization when we have the ball we want to regroup ourselves to attack on goal to create chances change our attitude from defense to offense again and then look to attack again to go up front right same thing here set pieces you got the set pieces here in the doing the throw in the penalty kick here all that will tell you exactly what what you're gonna do in the game who's gonna take them who's not gonna take them two things to remember on this slide here is the offensive phase and the defensive phase in the offensive phase we want to dominate the ball we want to create chances we want to score goals that's the offensive phase it's not negotiable once we're in the offensive phase that's what we're looking to achieve once we're in the defensive phase we want to recover the ball. We want to avoid any chances. We want to stop. We want to have no go against. That's the two important moment, sub moment, moment and sub moment we don't understand from here. Offensive organization called OO, right? So if we say OO offensive organization, that means organize yourself offensively. OT offensive transition, right? So we say OS OSP offensive set plays. So what are the offensive set play? We have our, our, our indirect free kick in, in front of 18 yard box. What are we gonna do with that? We need some offensive set plays. So we have to figure out something and do that, right? Defensive transition, DT, we do that. Defensive organization, DO, stuff like that, we do it, all right? So in here, now you see in here, in order to play in this formation, we need to have these things. We need to be disciplined. We need, we need to have tactical insight. We need to have good attitude, power, speed, technical speed, technique, and maturity. We've got to be mature, right? Because all these things around here, it will lead you to this in the middle. So once you have all these, or once you develop all these, when you mature, all these things will come handy right there, right? So again, our DNA, who we are, that's our ID, our ID card. Use a positive, enthusiastic manner with players at all times. So this is our identity. This is for, this is for the coaches, not for you guys. That's for the coaches. This is the element for the coaches. Okay. So DNA, our core element, our ID. Where's our identity? Where's the mindset? Who is this? Is who we are? This is what makes us different, right? So these are what makes us different. We involve, we win, we develop, right? This, this, this three thing here, this is what we're looking to do. We're looking to involve. That means we'll keep changing, keep adding new things, keep making changes, keep getting better. But then we want to keep, we want to win and we want to develop player as well. But then now as a player, this is your DNA, who, who you are. What is your identity as a player? This is who you are, right? This is what makes you different. This is how you do things. What is the, and uh, this is what makes us special. These are other strengths that we have. So again, you come over here, your 10 commandments, right? Talking your shirt, talking your shirt, shake hand, open door, greet visitors, clean your boots on time, never late, 24 hour professional, welcome new and newcomers, be your ambassador, be honest, never lie, be honest, tell the truth, right? So these, this, these, these 10 commandments are who you are as a player. Right? And then over here, that's something that, again, is part of who you are. You are the, we're trying to make you the product. We want to sell you. You are entertainer. So being a football player, you want to entertain people to watch beautiful soccer. So after we do all these things here, on when it comes on the match day, we want to be, you become the product. And that product is the dream. Then we come to all the objectives. So the one we learn in the, the four, the four, three, three formation, the three, five, two formation. That's the our way we play. We want to dominate possession. We want to be able to do transition. We want to recognize the game model. We want to play in our position. We want to know our responsibility. We want to play in those channels that we, we created for you, right? That's our style of play. That our approach, our tactical approach. How are we gonna do that, 
right? And then we tell you exactly how we're doing that because we're telling you what we want you to play and where you have to be at all times, right? Then what will be the outcome? The outcome will be the result. The result of the game and the player that we're producing. That will be our outcome, right? Very important when you play the game, you must know these to the tip of your finger. There's no way around it. Uh, as a player, you must know the principle of play. So again, as attack, when you're attacking, you have to know that everything in the green. When you're defending, you got to know everything in the green. So when you're attacking, you're penetrating. you penetrating means you're advancing the ball. You're supporting. That means supporting your teammate. Mobility means you're moving off the ball. Stretching the pitch means width. You, you go, you're going wide. Creativity, that means you're being created on the ball. And then defending, you got to pressure. You apply pressure to the ball. You cover, cover your teammate. Balance, you provide equal or more defenders. So we'll create, you see that we got two defenders here, try to create a balance, uh, compactness. You're restricting the space, you're taking away space, composure, you keep your focus, right, to defend the play. So these things you got to be very, you, as a player, you got to know these, these things. Because when you know this, it makes the game easy for you, it makes the, the decision making easy for you if you know the principle of play. All right. Over here, these are all keys, key terms that we're going to be dealing with throughout the season. So if we say recover your position, that means come back to your position. Go kick, go kick, uh, kick, go kick to the side, to the right side. That means we're just telling the goalkeeper kick the ball on the right side of the field. Throw in on the sideline. That means throw in the ball on the line, down the line. Throw, throw in. Do not let the ball inside. Do not let the ball throw. Do not throw the ball in the middle of the field. Always throw the ball on the side. If I tell you to do not let ball in inside, that means do not throw the ball inside the field. Throw the ball on the side on the field, right? You're gonna hear the wall of transition. You're gonna hear supply, supply, supply the ball, the the the, the wide player. That means the win player. You need to give them the ball. So you need to serve them with the ball. You need to play over, play over, play um, through press. So we need to play over them. We need to play over them and then through press send and press from the middle. First contact, second ball. If somebody apply pressure, the other person win the ball for the second time. Up to the ball. When you go press the ball, when you get straight to the ball and not standing around the player, right? So these are key terminology. We say full press. I mean, we want to press as a group, right? Variety of attacking option. We want guys to create other movement opportunity to be able to attack. So variety of attacking options. We need to create that for us. We need to counter, counter pace. If you have the ball laying got speed, I want you to attack them with speed. Not waiting around for, oh, let me get in front of me now, get me to the ball. No, I want you to attack them with speed. Open to counter. So when you counter, I want you to, we want player to get wide to support Leon. So if Leon running through the middle with the ball, we need some player on the side to be wide open to see if Leon can go through. He can, link, he can launch the ball to them and they can try to go through, right? You got to be disciplined, emotional, and tactical. Stick to the game plan. Do not change your game plan. If we give you the game plan before the game, you stay with it, right? Keep your shape. Make sure you keep your shape. The shape that we're going to give you, keep that shape. Be compact and disciplined. Make the play predictable. So the game, make, don't make the game easy for them. Make the game to a confuse, make the game confusable for them. So don't make it easy. Don't make it hard for them, but make them to keep making decisions whenever you have the ball, right? If they give you space, take the space. Explore space behind fullbacks. So if I'm playing right defense, I give you the space behind, you take the space behind me. Manage the game. Now we need player to be responsible to manage the game. You see in the NBA, these guys, the veteran player, they manage the game. Right now, so you manage the game. We get a player to step out our central midfield. You step out, we try to manage the game. When the ball goes out of bound, you don't rush to go get it. You take your time. You're managing the game, right? So do not lose focus. Concentrate on the basic set plays. So we have a lot to go through here with that, you know. So we will just focus on these one that I just read to you. Next, next week, we're going to touch these ones. We're going to touch these one, and then we're going to keep going on that. Right? We're going to keep going on that. So if you have any question for me, guys, you can definitely spit it out to me, and then we can look to give it, give it here. But if you understand everything, then we will put, we will put the recording. We'll put it up on the... we we'll put it up on, the, on, the, on YouTube, on YouTube, so we can send you the link on... Uh, on your team so you can look at the link and see exactly what we talk about you can see the presentation the powerpoint slide you can see it and you can be able to um go through everything here look at them on your own 
it's going to make you, as a better player, you need to understand all these. Once you understand you as a player, it's going to make your game very easy for you because, like, like I said, this is, can't get any better than this. We give you the system of play. We tell you how to play. We give you the role and responsibility of positions. We tell you as a, what, we give you your player profile, what you need to have as a player when you play in certain position, what are the quality we're looking for, and all that stuff is included in that. So we want the player to be able to have all the personality and, and all the quality to enable to play that position effectively. All right. So the video will be out there. Listen to it. You know what I mean? It doesn't hurt. To listen to it it doesn't hurt to, to read this thing on your own if you can and you know once we get the coach it will teach you that but right now we want you to start getting familiar with what it, as a player because most of you got 13 going to 14 some of you 14 going to 15 so we need to understand how to play the game right you see the quote here about Terry Henry Terry Henry said the average player you see the average player complicate the games and then he said the great player make the game simple so again, if I'm just an average player, I make the game harder. If I'm a great player, I make the game easy, right? So these are stuff that we need to um, look at. Nothing in here that says that we need to dribble the ball all day or we need to hold the ball all day and deny or teammate the ball. Everything it says in here about how we can move as a team, play as a team and pass the ball around as a team and do stuff individually as a team as well. But individually, when you're in the right area of the field, like that area we showed you, when you're in this part of the field, then in this area of the field, you can look to dribble and do other stuff. But when you're in this other area, it's just all passing the ball through, right? Passing the ball through, all right? Do you have any question, guys? Nope. All right, so if you don't have no question, then we're gonna end this here, guys. And then we're gonna look forward to maybe seeing you guys um, on Wednesday, guys. We'll look to see you guys on Wednesday, and then we'll go from there, right? Okay, bye, Coach. FTC, thank, okay. you, thank you, Coach. Yeah. Like we stand up. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, bye. Have a nice day. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. All right, buddy. It's over. So we'll see you tomorrow. See you, sir.